How many of you would like to have more time in the day to get things done? Okay. Now, does anyone in here think you could do something different to get more time? I'm not saying manage it better. I mean more than 24 hours in a day. I have to be specific because there's always a couple people who will say, well, I can. No, you can't. It's a scientific fact, right? But we think so much about time, time, time. You've probably seen a lot of the studies that say finances are one of the biggest stressors, and that is true. But in my research, looking at 8,000 people, the number one most stressful thing we do every morning is think, I don't have enough time to get it all done. And as soon as that hijack happens, our brain is not our own. We are now totally stress sensitive. We're being pulled off into survival mode and putting out fires instead of being intentional about being in the moment when the moments matter most. Uh, one thing I will share with you that surprises a lot of people is uh, my two biggest fears are actually public speaking and flying. So I'm really nervous right now. I didn't have to fly to get here, which is cool. But that's just part of life, right? And I have learned, fortunately, how to use the energy of stress to fuel positive change. And I'm really passionate about that. That's our energy that we bring to the time that we have. And unfortunately, right now, we are in the midst of a human energy crisis. It makes me emotional to even say that, because I think that this is so important for us to understand. People aren't going to work disengaging because they want to. People aren't making bad choices because they want to. We're so exhausted. We've spread ourselves so thin. And so what happens when the energy we have, when our capacity is less than the demand, we have this intersection. It's the human energy crisis, and it shows up. And if we had more time, I'd ask you all to tell me how it shows up. But the subtle piece that happens more often than not is just disengagement. So I'm here, but I'm not really here. How many of you have been in a room like this where physically you've been there, but mentally or emotionally you were somewhere else? Raise your hand. This is how I can tell if you're paying attention. Some of you just looked around and said, what'd she ask? That's OK. <laughs> because we've all done it before. And if you're anything like me, because I'm so mindful about it, I'll do it mid-conversation. And, and now I just am honest about it. I am so sorry. I have so many things going on right now. You have my full attention. Let's just go back for a second. If you've ever had a conversation with somebody who is fully present with you, you feel it. You feel it. It is the most beautiful gift that we can give to each other. But we have to train our energy to be able to do that. And it's our brain that ultimately decides how much energy you have to spend on the time that you have. So be fully here for a shorter period of time and then be fully there. And that's the oscillation pattern we need to do. And that's what I'd encourage you to practice here. Be fully here for a shorter period of time and then do what you need to do. Get outside, get fresh air, go for a walk. I brought tennis shoes to throw on later. I plan on doing a little bit of a walk later. And that might be hard because I have so much other work I could be squeezing into the five minutes. But think about the energy you bring to the time that you have when you recharge. If you could keep that in mind, what's the energy you bring to the time that you have? I'm sure everyone in here has had something painful or stressful happen that ended up being a blessing in disguise. How many of you could say, looking back on your life, you've gone through something challenging that ended up making you stronger, making you feel more connected with other people? Interesting little nugget of research that cortisol, which kills brain cells in the hippocampus, when it's by itself, turns into this regenerative hormone when it's in combination with oxytocin. So there's two primary ways to create new brain cells. One is through aerobic exercise, and the other one is going through something stressful with someone you love. Now, I know many of you are like, I got enough of that. I'm good. But what I want you to focus on is not so much the stress part, but the love part. Because you can go through stress with people that you say you love, but you're not feeling really loving towards. And if you're not getting that oxytocin boost, it doesn't work. So you have to feel connected. And I feel like that's part of what's so beautiful about this, is we come here and we dance together and we share together and we share our challenges together. And then we feel connected. And we learn more as a result of that. But no matter what, take the time to take care of yourself 
because that's the only way you're going to bring that beautiful energy to the time that you have. So thank you all for your time this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you.